So I'm around 100 people. On those 100 people, I've got six cases where I found something by testing physically which was not exactly the same as what the person described as being the best fit. <coughs> one of the cases in this room, I tested one of the person in this room back uh, last year uh, in America, in, uh, in uh, Salt Lake City, and we came to a kind of discussion about thinking and feeling. That's one of my cases. On my two last cases, I tested a young lady as ISFP. And it happened that she is an INFP. She said my best fit is INFP, and all the signals and indication I got says definitely typical INFP. So that's typically a case where I say, well, I didn't find exactly the answer. The last case, the lady said I'm intuitive, but she has such a low degree of self-knowledge that I don't know where the problem is coming from. But let's assume around 100 testing, six cases where I had one mistake on one variable, it makes it six person. Oh gosh, I wish I had that 25 years ago or 20 years ago, because I'm always impressed by that. So, this physical testing is done through testing your posture, like this, like this, like this, like this. Testing motricity, but also a funny stuff, which is testing vision. Okay, just one part of the vision. And with that, you can understand whether a person is sensing or intuition. It's thinking or feeling, judging, perceiving, extrovert or introvert. You can see whether the person is uh, associated or dissociated. If you watch, for example, uh, Federer, Roger Federer's plane, is an associated guy. So you will see him moving, the pelvis and the shoulders move together. And so he's turning on his legs. There is a new kit on the block on the professional tennis, a Canadian guy, Shopalov or something like this. I always misspell his name. I watch him playing, you will see the pelvis is like this and the shoulder do like this. The guy is a dissociated. And Bertrand and Ralph have found huge correlation in in between your uh, pairs of function and the fact to know whether you're associated or dissociated. And finally, you've got the horizontal or vertical. Estin Gay is a French guy. Uh, he won two times the gold medal in river, uh, uh, descending rivers, and he is an horizontal. And mechanically, you've got to paddle this way, because if you paddle this way, you're losing mechanical efficiency, so he paddled this way. But you will see every time he paddles, he puts his head like this in order to recover his, his horizontality. And I discovered that eight years ago. Uh, I had to help a, a young sporter who was stuck with some problems, and we didn't find the problems until the time I met those guys. And I will always remember one thing in my life. The first time I met uh, uh, Bertrand, he told me, take this ball and throw the ball at me. And I said, you know, Bertrand, I'm not gifted. I have never been gifted. I was ashamed. Whether it was handball, volleyball, I was just ashamed. He said, whatever, try it. And Bertrand was maybe where you are, ma'am, and the ball got there. And so I said, you see, Bertrand, I'm not gifted. And I said, I know it's a belief I have about myself. But this belief is based on facts. <laughs> and then Bertrand told me, you know what? It's normal. You are an INFP. And you throw the ball at me like an ST should be doing, with your arms far from the body. So he told me, you know what? Keep your left arm far from the body. And take your right arm close to your body. And I throw the ball again and the ball just got in his hands. I didn't believe I was able to do that. I made a wrong belief based on wrong assumption of myself just because most of my teachers probably <coughs> were STs. And they learned to throw ball the way it works for them. 
one more time in my life, I came to the conclusion that when people say they are not gifted, often it's because they have not been taught the way that's appropriate for them. I may, maybe have been a good player, but given the fact I was not taught the right way, like SP kids get in schools often, I had the wrong belief about myself. Okay? That's the way I discovered it. We solved the problem of this young sporter, who is now doing pretty fine. And uh, I followed the training, and I've tested it. And one of the things I've discovered is that Bertrand and Ralph use a different kind of code to explain the types. And it's a bit like temperament interaction style. We know that temperament is not exactly type. We know interaction styles are not exactly type. But they fit together. That's the same with action types. And so the first thing is that they started with a letter. D stands for distance. The STs, if you see them, they will be stronger when they can be at a distance. So uh, if you are doing a sport of combat and you are nasty, you need to keep distance with the other guy. If you watch, for example, in the US, the NASCAR races, most of the time you will see the drivers are like this. But a lot of race drivers are STPs. And I always wonder, how do those guys do? Because it's just not the right way to drive for them. Then we work the SFs. And the SFs are global. Move globally, they are associated, and they are stronger when they have their, their arms close to their body. My son is low, is an ISFP. When he needs to do something mechanical, you will see he gets closer to the thing he needs to move. Because that's where he gets more precision and more threat. Then we got DNF, DNFs, and we are called rhythmic. And there you may say, well, it's to prove that the system is not working. Because if you see me walking, I'm supposed to be a rhythmic. <coughs> with smooth movement and a lot of elegance, which is not the case. But by the way, in interaction style, I'm also a behind the scene, and I'm supposed to walk softly and smoothly. If you hear me in the stairs, you will see that there is a problem. So that does not mean there is a problem with interaction style. That does not mean there is a problem with action type either. Just probably a problem in my body. That's something else. I suppose we didn't come from that. Okay? And then we've got the NTs and Cs for concept. People like Federer, they need a huge training time to master, understand, project, and so on, the, 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 the movements. You can see that with race drivers. Some of them can do visualization. STs often, they don't do, I, STPs, they don't do visualization. They just go and run. As if they can break three centimeters further, they will do it. But I remember a guy he was an NT, an INTJ, and he was trying to train young race pilots. And he wanted them to plan where they break, where they turn. It's just not working because most of them are CPs. And they just experience the track and see whether they can break later or not. And then we've got all those figures. One, two, three, four. And that comes from Priva. And it's a kind of scale of spontaneousness. EPs are more... When I'm talking about EPs, I'm not talking about the guy in California who's smoking or you know, extrovert or perceiving. And EPs are supposed to be more spontaneous than IPs, which are more than EJs, which are more than IJs. And therefore, we got the scale. And ISTPs are D2s. INFPs are R2. I'm married with an ISTP lady, so the both of us make D2, R2, so sometimes. Uh, <laughs> looks a bit like uh, Star Wars. Okay. So, what are your questions at this stage? In the next stage, I'm going to show you a video. What was the what is C stand for? C concept. Thank you. you should R like it. No. R is rhythmic. Rhythmic. J global. And D distance. Okay. So let me show you a, a video. This is my daughter, by the way. Um, I felt a bit ashamed to ask to a customer 
please smile to the camera next week you're on CNN. So I have asked to my daughter, and by the way, she's quite cute, so it's due to her mother. So uh, <laughs> let me show you what it took. And obviously, uh, I knew her time before I would test her. So she was just a demo. I didn't discover anything by doing that. So give me 30 seconds. Okay. I have first asked her to stand in position. start the, the testing with her and I will first start by testing SN and TF. So I put her in the right position uh, where she is in intuitive mode and I test her and although I'm much stronger than what she is I sh and there I put her into a sensing posture and you see she lose all kinds of ability to rhythm. <coughs> now we'll be testing thinking and feeling I start with feeling and see what happens. I'm pushing, and she has some strength. Now I put her into a thinking position while she is still in intuitive. Okay, and uh, okay, I show it to her. And watch what I do with my uh, right hand. I know she's going to go away, and so I keep her in a mode she would fall. Now we are in sensing mode, thinking. And you see, it's a bit stronger because it's uh, opposite side, but she has no much strength. And then we are in sensing feeling. And although she knows that for years and we have been doing tests, she was still surprised by, in all far, she was not able to resist. Okay? No, a funny test. I'm testing feeling there. Okay? She's in intuitive mode. I'm testing feeling. And I've got just one hand, but still I have the ability to put some strength, and she can resist. I'm testing thinking, and <laughs> look what happens. And when you do that with rational people, it's funny to see their reaction because they can't resist. Okay. Now I'm testing what is called the mobile points, high mobile points and low mobile points, and I'm this is for testing associate or dissociate, and there she has got strength, so she has either an NF or an ST. Now I'm testing the low Are mobile phone. Are you simulating phone. that spot? Is that what you're doing? When yeah, you're I'm simulating that spot here on L4. Okay? And you see what happens? No strength at all. Okay? Now we'll be testing what is called the horizontality. Well, we have first this test. It's a complementary test uh, just to uh, correlate the, the results I got. She's in the NF mode there with all the weight on the left side. Now I put her on NT mode. Okay, you see her face? She tries, but she's surprised. There she's in ST mode. Okay, a bit more as uh, previously. And then SJ mode. Okay, fine. So all the tests do correlate the fact that she is an NF. Okay. of talk dad and, uh, and daughter. Okay, now let's go. And we'll be testing the horizontality, so whether she is IPG or the opposite. Okay? And this is a test to see, to uh, put herself into an horizontal mode. She does it for a bit. Okay? Put her feet in the right position. I'm going to test her. And the more I push, the more she's able to resist. So the testing is really that I push more and more and see whether she's able to, to get energy and keep it. That's a, a test to test the uh, uh, vertical mode. Okay. So I put her into a vertical position. And here we go for the testing. Watch my hand. Because she goes immediately. So there, I know she is either an IP or an EG. I do a different testing, which is the same. You can see that Trudeau, he met once uh, Trump, and Trump is like this when he shake hands, and Trudeau had a trick to avoid that Trump would exert too much pressure. So maybe he knows the truth. So I've been testing that. I, I do the test with the two hands. And you see, you can't see it on the camera, but 
facing her during the test. The more pressure I exert, the more she tends to put her uh, uh, arms like this, which is typical of a reaction of a, of a horizontal person. Okay? Now, we'll be, that's the most funny test. This one is striking the reaction of people. So I will put her into intuitive feeling. Okay? And watch there. Watch, yeah? Watch, watch what will happen. Okay, you see? She plays with her tongue on the left cheek. Okay? Okay, again in NF mode. Watch there. Okay? That's the funniest test I have. This one is really funny. I, I work a lot in France with a research centrum, with guys that did PhDs, all engineers, scientists, and for one day and a an half, I will do a conventional type training so that the guy gets to know me and see I'm not a fool, I'm not a kind of fantasy, I know my stuff. <coughs> and for the last afternoon, I'll take one of the most rational, not in the temperament side, but in terms of, of behaviors, and do that kind of testing with the person. And when the person sees that just by changing the tone from one side to the other, she or he lose all his abilities to resist, believe me, the impact on the person is incredible. Because most of those guys, you know, it's, you've got the body, you've got the brain, you know, guys? It's the same part, okay? And now I will be testing the uh, introversion and extroversion side. Okay, I'm putting her into the normal mode. And then she will do the same, again in NF, but closing her eyes, my voice becomes slow, smooth, low level, and she was she had the strength like that. And just immediately we put again in extra version and watch what happens. So all the indications are the same. She is an INFP, which I knew. Uh, and as I said, since January 2017, six cases with one letter wrong around one of the people. One of them is smiling right. Okay. So this is one part of it. But there is a second part of it. Is that a half has discovered something which is quite new, quite interesting, and striking which are called deep motivational drivers. If you play golf, for example, if I would play golf, probably I would play like this. My left eye on the ball, my body to the front, shoulder bended, and head like this because I'm an INFP. But deep motivational drivers act at the moment when you prepare your movement. And three years ago, I was in training, and there was a guy, he is a coach, a uh, golf coach. And when he was young, he wanted to be a professional, running competitions. And he realized that his deep motivational drivers were different when, from his preference. And in fact, the guy had to plan the way he would play, and then the moment of the play, just let go. And when he was young, he didn't know that, didn't master that, and so he missed it. And deep motivational drivers are, are a bit like, excuse me for the technical glitch, are a bit like, <coughs> are a bit like a motivation to act where the preferences are the way our brain reacts when things happen. And so, those are the deep motivational drivers. And those are the preferences that we know from Jung. So, we've got extroverted sensing, introverted sensing. We've got extroverted intuition, introverted intuition. We've got extroverted thinking, introverted thinking. We've got extroverted feeling, introverted feeling. Well, we've got understanding. And understanding, if you see the color, is like thinking. But they have been using different words, otherwise it would have been so complicated. Understanding is like a bit, it pushes you to your thinking. 
So if one of your motivational drivers is external understanding, you tend to you want to use extroverted thinking. Introverted understanding, introverted thinking. Relation, red like feeling. Extroverted relation, I want to use my extroverted feeling. Introverted relation, introverted feeling. Then you've got in a kind of yellow there, projection, which comes around with intuition. And then in green you've got anchoring, which is similar to sense. And then in black you've got competition. And competition for me is a funny one. External competition means I want to be the best. A customer of mine is an ISTP with an external competition. Gosh, believe me, those are very competitive people. They can't play a game at all. They want to win it. They will be the most that cheat, the one that cheats the most just to win. And the guy, he was swimming. The day he became 44, he started not to win anymore. So he stopped swimming. And then he started a different sport where he would win. But the sport he selected, there was no competition. The other guys were weak. So he said, I'm winning, but it's not tough enough. So he went to a third sport because he wanted to win, but against good people. An internal competition. I had once in France an INFP with internal competition. He looked so much more different from the other INFP in the room. That day I was luckily enough to have four INFPs, all of them with different deep motivational drivers. And the one with internal competition would never get the rest. He always wanted more from himself. In terms of bandwidth, the presentation of yesterday probably would have scored very low because the guy would never get the rest. And those deep motivational drivers, I mean, that's amazing what I've been able to do with that. Few cases. Sometimes the deep motivational driver, we, each of us, we have got two, two of the ten. If they match with your dominant and auxiliary function, <coughs> oh gosh, you will have a clear top. It will be easy to see what is your top. But when your deep motivational drivers activate functions that are not part of your dominant auxiliary set, very funny things can happen. When I say funny, I should put quotes around funny. First of all, the last time most of the people I've seen that said, I don't know whether I'm an INFP or an INTP, an ESFJ, an ESTJ, most of the time, when we went through the deep motivational drivers, I got the answer. But suddenly, very strange things can happen. Let me, let me give you a few examples. A customer of mine is an INTP. So dominant, <coughs> introverted thinking, uh, force function, extroverted feeling. So expressing feeling is not exactly his cup of tea. And when he gets into a moment where he needs to express emotion, he can become a bit of critical, cynical, tough. But one of the is two deep motivational drivers is external relationship. And the guy is bright, funny, Nice, nice clothes, uh, beautiful face, very easy for him to get, but he lose those ladies at the speech, which is amazing. The churn rate is amazing, because his external relationship makes so that he says to his new girlfriend, oh, babe, come in my hands. But then introverted thinking kicks in, and he doesn't feel safe. And so sometimes he will say something like, you smell perspiration? Not exactly a good idea. Or sometimes he say, when I met you, I didn't realize you were so fat. <laughs> and so he get kicks out regularly. And all those ladies, they have read books, so he say, you're passive aggressive, you are say or that. And after a certain number of times, he started to believe that. When he realized that his problem became from a difference between his drive to act due to the deep motivation of drivers, and his lack of comfort due to his dominant and uh, uh, forced function, things became much more clearer for him. He was about to go and see a psychologist and said, I have a problem. 
I'm going to be someone wrong. I'm going to be someone bad. The other case is a very nice lady. She lives in, uh, in, in Quebec. She is an INTJ. And guess what? INTJ and IT, so extroverted feelings, the fixer. So when she gets into emotional stuff, uh, she doesn't feel safe because she can't control it. And critical parents is what? Introverted thinking, which means that when she's tough, she can be quite tough. And guess what? Deep motivational driver, external relationship. So she keeps attracting this guy that are looking for a mother or a grand sister, which she can't support. So she has really a hard time. Am I an INFP, me, who is also an external relation as a deep motivation of driver? And that's, oh, I understood something in my life. Why am I so kind? Because my external relationship makes that I want to make people happy. I want to create relation. But that's also extroverted feeling, my opposing function, which means I don't like if you want to try to make me happy. So I spend my life trying to make people happy and not asking that in return, and not accepting that in return. So this deep motivation of driver, there's still so much of thing to discover, validate, test, and so on. It's just one group of people that discover that. So it's just a lens, you need to be cautious about it. But I've seen very, very interesting things. So to conclude my presentation, I think we are becoming increasingly digital. And I don't see that as a good news for humankind. I believe type can give an answer to that if we go for a multi-perspective and we remind people that there is no good and no wrong. And if you are interested in going into this uh, multi-perspective, the body brings a very interesting argument. There are a lot of things to be proven. There are a lot of things to be tested. But right now, it has helped me to solve a series of cases and to simplify my life when people that don't know each themselves tell me, I don't know who I am. And I say, I'm going to do a test. I do the test. And then I explain them the dynamics, the opposing, <coughs> the critical parent, and we go into a kind of validation. And in France and Europe, those are very rational cultures, so I do a day and a an half just to make sure people trust me and then I will do this. But in Canada, people are much more open and much more ready to trust you. So I start immediately from action time. And it's amazing the kind of situation. So this is what I wanted to present to you. We are becoming increasingly digital. Type is a solution to that. And body is just one additional lens that can be quite rich and quite useful. I'd like to thank you. If you've got any questions, I'd be more pleased than to answer those questions. But already, please accept.